Yeah, let's start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session, Equitable Development of Southeast Asia in Horizons Asia 2020. Can you do an online applause? Okay, right. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, uh, 2020 is a very, very special year for everyone of us. So in this year, we have to learn um, again how to work, how to to learn, how to live, and and now we have very special um, online horizon Asia. I think it is very first time. It is very special, and I think it is really really interesting. So um, our session. Uh, have a subject, equitable development of Southeast Asia. And my question is, how can we ensure equitable development um, even in the COVID-19 time? So think about um, equitable development. We know that uh, Asia uh, completes many, many big contrasts, uh, small states and larger countries and some very rich and some very poor, and each country have their own experience in ensuring the equitable development, but uh, which lesson we can share with each other and especially what uh, cooperation or coordination we can um, provide each other. How can we go together to ensure equitable development for our region? It is a topic today. And let me introduce the uh, panel, um, wonderful panel for our session today. So let me introduce the first, uh, Ms. Usama Fayad, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Open Insights USA. Please, uh, Usama, can you smile, look at the camera and uh, raise your hand? <laughs> Thank Hello. you, Usama. Um, Takeshi Izuka-san, our President, uh, Kirirom Institute of Technology, Cambodia. Yeah, Hi. thank you very much. Nichiwa. And Alan Law, President Anglo Euro Energy Indonesia from Indonesia. Thank you. Hi, Alan. Right. Hi there. Okay, so first, in the first um, 10 minutes, I'd like uh, my audience uh, to know more about you, about your businesses, about your company. And uh, what do you think, uh, very briefly, about uh, equitable development of uh, our region? Please, maybe first I would like to ask uh, Alan. Alelo, please. Share sure. Your yes. Well, you know, good day and good evening. You know, this, this you know, the distinguished guests and speakers, uh, fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I am Alan Lau. I'm the founder and CEO of Anglo Euro Developers Singapore, as well as the president director of uh, Anglo Euro Energy Indonesia. Anglo Euro Energy is an infrastructure project developer in the natural gas and LNG, in new and renewable energy, in methane emission abatement and carbon capture projects in Indonesia. We balance our business with social impact projects such as low cost housing with earthquake resistance structures and drinkable water. And this is an off grid system where water, drinkable water is generated from air and sunlight without any power connection. Anglo Euro Energy is also an accredited, through the Singapore office, is an accredited training organization in public private partnership for the World Bank Group. And we are also active members in the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe in the Sustainable Energy Division, as well as consultant to the UN Economic and Social Commission for Asia the Pacific. Uh, I shall be touching on how to achieve equitable you know, development and as well as what can the region through the cooperation, through the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, 
what can they do to actually to promote equitable development? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And now uh, we will listen to Takeshi Izuka-san. Please, Izuka-san. Ah, okay, thank you very much. So, hello, everyone. So, uh, my name is Takeshi. So, I'm Japanese, but main business in Cambodia, but headquarter is Singapore. So, and we have a company in Japan, too. So, uh, uh, we are, looks like, uh, we have a uh, most famous business in our group is the Kirilom Institute of Technology. So this is a residential university, only one residential university in Singapore, uh, in Cambodia, and the focus for innovation and the creating the startup companies. So uh, we offer free accommodation and free food and free uh, school fee. So that means all free. So uh, we invite genius Cambodian uh, to our school and we train the uh, students, three, over 3,000 internships uh, to create a company, a organized company. So this is called, uh, we, uh, our business model, headquarter business model, may, uh, maybe startup studio. It's like a bin, uh, startup industry. So what we are doing is uh, to create startup ecosystem in Cambodia uh, across the region. And our investor is over 70, oh no, sorry, uh, 40 people, a uh, uh, famous Japanese entrepreneur businessman like this. So as a result, so our company is uh, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, Japan support Cambodia economy like this. So that's why, so we are invited this uh, session. So, uh, uh, okay, as a result, so school starting uh, six years before, uh, now seven years. Uh, these two months, we create two startups uh, in Cambodia and some start startups in uh, Singapore. We will create uh, five more during this uh, uh, from uh, six months from now. Wow, uh, so interesting. Thank you, uh, Takeshi san. Yeah, and you. now uh, we will. Uh, We'll listen to Osama Fayad, please, Mr. Osama. Osama, uh, your 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 microphone. Uh, thank, you. Oh, I'm sorry. thank you. Yeah, th thank you, Loa. Uh, my name is Osama Fayad, chairman and uh, uh, founder of Open Insights. Um, my career has been mostly in in uh, data science and machine learning. Uh, although I have worked on uh, many accelerators uh, for startups in many parts of the world, uh, including the Middle East, including India and Southeast Asia, uh, a little bit in Australia. I do invest uh, in a lot of uh, companies, especially technology companies. The company Open Insights was founded in 2008 uh, after I left Yahoo, where I was the first uh, chief data officer uh, at Yahoo and actually... Um, uh, worldwide, that was the first time we created the title. I also took uh, time off from Open Insights between 2013 uh, and 2016 to be the global chief data officer at Barclays Bank in London. Um, in the meantime, what I want to go back to is kind of the kind of work we do and how does this relate to uh, equitable growth in the region, especially in Southeast Asia. So our focus is on uh, big data, AI, uh, let's call it advanced analytics and machine learning. How do you make AI work in corporations? We work some, with some of the largest organizations in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, actually, we work with a lot of companies in the US and, and Europe also, uh, as well as South Africa. But we do have a, a recent focus on Southeast Asia with a lot of the work centered uh, around Singapore, but in, in many of the countries. Um, Open Insights, essentially, uh, by delivering, what, what we do is we enable our uh, customers to do two things. Number one is uh, capture and utilize the data that, uh, that they have access to. But number two is to actually create new businesses and new revenue streams based on the data they may have from operating their businesses. Uh, so we actually see a lot uh, of, of growth happening uh, as companies, especially telcos, 
uh, but we also work with banks and, and many other uh, uh, industrial institutions. We see a whole new uh, set of revenue streams being created and a whole new generation of startups uh, being created because of this new data e ecosystem. So the data ecosystem itself is a, is a big enabler. Some of the uh, uh, topics I will be touching upon in our, our session today yeah. is uh, revolve around several axes, but primarily is that when we talk about equitable growth, we have to be thinking about the region. We, we can no longer be thinking about this country being poor, this country being rich. I think the rich countries, the poor countries are all motivated to have bigger markets. And mm -hmm. by thinking regionally and by creating regional markets mm -hmm. uh, with a lot less friction in between the countries and more uniform laws and regulation, uh, we can effectively actually bring uh, equitable growth to everybody. In fact, my belief is we bring uh, uh, growth to uh, all uh, rich oh. countries as well as uh, not so rich countries. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the areas I would like to also focus on, and then I'll hand it back to you, Loan, uh, among other topics, is mm -hmm. really I want to think about, I, I want the countries in, in the Southeast Asia region to think very hard about many problems that mm -hmm. have very strong demand actually globally, but of course regionally, mm -hmm. uh, and have very little supply, right? Examples of these include data science, include AI, include cybersecurity, uh, yep. include IOT. Uh, yep. Those areas are huge areas for growth yep. because the demand far exceeds the supply, which means you mm -hmm. can actually be supplying talent that is highly paid, creating businesses that are very highly uh, compensated uh, with reasonable margins and allowing the weaker countries, weaker economies to actually compete with the giant economies out there. And that's one area that seems to be ignored and I believe regional thinking is one of the big enablers to allow uh, all countries in the region, small and big, to kind of grow in that direction. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Osama, for your very inspirational speech. And um, yeah, I agree with you. And I think that it is wonderful that we have a beautiful bouquet of uh, experience, uh, knowledge and businesses here in uh, our panel. And maybe we will... Uh, I uh, have addressed first uh, at the question, what are your opinions on the comparison in the stage of equitable development of different countries? Or maybe you, you will think about uh, the experience from your, your own country, uh, which uh, um, inequality uh, we need to be, uh, we need to address first, maybe. Uh, Alan, uh, could you right. share your first? Your, yes. your experience first? Yes, from my experience, there needs to be four fundamentals mm. in working towards the process uh, of equitable development. Equitable development, to me, means inclusive development, leaving no one behind. Mm -hmm. The objective of equitable development is inclusive growth and the promotion and to enhance inclusive prosperity. Now, these four fundamentals can be applied in any country, regardless of their stages of development, their income level, their economic wealth, as well as their level of infrastructure. These fundamentals First is building community resilience. And I will mention this also with, with relevant relating to the present, the pandemic. Mm. Community resilience in the event of disaster, be it natural or man-made, the collective effort of the community have proven time and time again to be a cohesive force to mitigate against the impact of the, the disaster. Mm. And also it has shown through actual experience that the community resilience have also aided in the process of post-disaster recovery. 
this is a very basic foundation that needs that must have the uh, focus and the implementation of the governments mm. in Southeast Asia, and also this is applied worldwide. Mm. Second is self sufficiency. In this pandemic, we have seen the importance of food security. And in the urban states, the um, sustainability of the supply chain. Mm. Self-sufficiency goes beyond this. It also applies to monetary, fiscal, and trade policy, such as the optimal utilization of natural resources, especially in the energy sector, mm. the lessening of dependence on imports, mm. uh, the mitigation of your currency risks, to ensure your financial resilience of the country. As we all are aware that in times of uh, trade and geopolitical strife, currency is often used, are often used as a tool for manipulation. Mm. Thirdly, there must be a system a well-structured system of your distribution system from the flow of funds, of services, of systems, of aids from the federal to the provincial and from the provincial to the villages, to the district, and then to the villages and to the household. This whole connectivity and accessibility is important in normal times and it can be a challenge in countries where there are, uh, you know, archipelago such as Indonesia and a lot of the, of the Southeast Asian countries. And in times of crisis, this base is very important to be able to distribute help, aid, services to the, especially to the remote areas. And finally, the importance of having a fund, a funding mechanism whereby communities are involved in long-term commercial activities as well as infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. This will then have, there is a commitment of funds for on a long-term basis to act as a social capital to implement community-based projects at the grassroots level instead of just depending on government subsidies. So these are the four factors, regardless of all, at any stage of economic, you know, development of the member states. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Usa. Um, thank you, uh, Alan Law, for your sharing. And uh, especially you mentioned four factors. I think very, very important we have to think when we think about uh, ensuring equitable development in the in the region and when you um, mention disasters i think um, many of us uh, from our audience also can relate on uh, situation in uh, uh, our own country uh, like in vietnam we also suffer from typhoon like a, every year it's happened and it uh, bring a lot of trouble uh, of trouble for our um, rural area and uh, also, I'd like to hear from uh, Takashi Izuka. Uh, could you share your point of view? Do you agree with uh, Island Law or can you add something from Japanese view and also from Cambodian view? Because uh, uh, you have uh, both uh, experience and knowledge, Takashi-san. And uh, could I mention that uh, we have uh, lots of people now follow our station and everyone can... Uh, uh, who have um, opinion or question or comment, please uh, raise your hand or uh, please uh, give your comment uh, uh, into our session. Please, uh, Takeshi-san. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, Cambodia is a very important country for uh, Japan because uh, these two countries is a, a very close relationship. So, when... Uh, do, uh, around uh, World War Second and Cambodia Civil War. So uh, now 
So uh, both countries support each other. This, re, uh, this is uh, one of the history. So uh, uh, and my, my grandfather uh, died in World War II in ASEAN. So that maybe affect my uh, life. So it's okay. So and Cambodia is a still a very, very poor country, but it's no, uh, I think no problem because now after Yahoo, uh, thank you very much. So uh, yeah, so uh, after Yahoo, after internet, so uh, equate a bit. So maybe poor country uh, can achieve high growth. So advanced country is a low growth. So the future is a uh, uh, low, uh, uh, Cambodia, no problem at uh, this point. So, but uh, to join the startup ecosystem, the most serious issue in Cambodia is education. So no education focus IT, no education focus startup, no funds. Uh, that's happening around 2014. So, uh, so big data, IoT, cybersecurity. So, Osama mentioned is all uh, our school teach to Cambodia. So, but a little bit worry is uh, our school teach cybersecurity to Cambodian government. Uh, I worry this is good or not good. But so we are Cambodian school, we have to teach cybersecurity. So, so because we are Cambodian school. So, um, and so for startup, so Cambodia is a blue. Uh, a Cambodia have to be think blue ocean strategy. So to focus startup, Cambodia is no handicap. So many opportunity. So and uh, our school will be a role model or for another institute in Cambodia. So I think many school will catch up us. So Cambodia uh, about this is no problem. So what what I want to say is a, a serious issue is a sanction. But sanction is, uh, for example, your, uh, Europe do sanction to uh, Cambodia government and uh, US, uh, some senator uh, offer sanction to Cambodia and Singapore officer says uh, Cambodia should be go out from ASEAN, right? So, but if uh, serious sanction coming, so Cambodia have to move to the more close to the uh, non-West side so uh, I understand. So uh, thinking of European, um, American, Singaporean, but please be uh, more consider. So uh, how uh, uh, Cambodian young future leader be a uh, free economic side. So uh, to consider about this. So uh, don't stop uh, investment to the startup in Cambodia, and but. Uh, to continue this, very important is uh, uh, to give exit chance for the Cambodian startup. This means uh, invest to the Cambodian. Mm. So sanction in invest investment side is a serious issue happening in the startup ecosystem. So um, only uh, consider about this point. So uh, equitable development uh, in, uh, is uh, uh, so it will be solved uh, problem. So, but uh, I understand. So uh, money laundering everything. So, but uh, uh, we have to uh, create uh, innovate new new way of sanction or a new way of controlling. Uh, uh, non, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I cannot say so much. But anyway, need innovation for sanction. So uh, this is my uh, learning. Mm. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your point of view. And you said that uh, uh, investing in Cambodia and also giving chance for Cambodian people to uh, um, start up. Uh, it is a really good thing to care about uh, uh, equitable development in in the region. Thank you for your point of view. And I think uh, somehow um, Usama Fayat will share this point of view, but maybe you will give uh, us your insight about uh, which um, inequality we address first, uh, uh, vulnerable people or um, uh, the inequality in the cyber space? Um, I mean, like, 
um, like like the like the uh, <laughs> like the COVID virus. I think the things like cyberspace, IoT, and all these new areas are they, they make no difference. They are uh, weak across the board in in almost all the countries in the region. So they're great uh, they're great opportunities. Um, I would I would agree uh, uh, very much with uh, Takeshi-san that uh, the idea of pushing startups and creating a new ecosystem and economy through startups is one of the big factors that will work both for the advanced economies as well as the poorer uh, economies. I think there is a lot of poverty in the region. I think I mentioned earlier that thinking regionally and thinking of, in fact, making ASEAN stronger rather than weaker, more open, etc., is one of the approaches to create a bigger market and greater opportunities. But some of the things that I think are big game changers, especially for the region, is two things. Two things I don't like about the region, right? There is this association, and by the way, there are great examples of countries there, and we can go through several of them, including you know, the, the miracle that Singapore pulled off, the transformation Vietnam went through with, with IT services and, uh, you know, Hong Kong in, in the older days and how they became, you know, essential to the world of finance and trade. But what I will say is the following. There are two things I don't like about the region, and I think the region needs to break out of them. Number one is this whole notion of cheap labor. Uh, you know, countries, the poorer economies immediately jump on the idea that, well, we have a lot of people, say, in Indonesia, we have a lot of uh, chance to provide cheap labor to other countries. Let's do that. I think that does not do much. I mean, it helps, of course, but it doesn't uh, transform and it doesn't create the game changers. So the thinking needs to be changing around instead of providing cheap labor is to provide the higher skilled labor. And that leads me to the second related point which is skilled labor does not necessarily mean traditional education. One of the things that also very much I find in the region is not being taken advantage of is letting go of the traditional educational path and taking on models like what Germany did uh, before and after the world wars. Uh, Germany's notion of education includes um, things like uh, apprenticeship, includes things like skills training, not just kind of knowledge training. And I think that can be extremely uh, transformational, especially in the new world, as you take a lot of these, you know, you may think of IT and cybersecurity and all these uh, data science even requiring kind of deep knowledge and lots of studying and engineering. It's not quite true, actually, to operate these technologies, you just need to have uh, the, the right skills, the right apprenticeship, the right art of practicing uh, these these new uh, techniques and applying them. And I think that could be the game changer for, for the region because it actually creates the equitable growth. And the good news is it creates it both for the poorer economies as well as the richer economies. And I'm a big believer that it has to be a win-win for both. Like you cannot focus on one country and say, I want to make this country stronger. I actually think you need to create models that make everybody stronger. And that's how everybody uh, kind of rises much, much faster uh, because everybody then is motivated to make it work. Yeah, thank you. One comment uh, from Vic uh, Maria Victoria Genuno, a business development head of GIOI, to Alan. Could you uh, confirm that four fundamental you mentioned include uh, inclusive development, inclusive growth, community resilience, as well as community involvement, right? Right? I think yeah. You are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, many people raise hand, and uh, maybe I will give uh, a chance for our audience to speak out and give question or comment. Uh, okay, I see here, and you can see here many people join us and uh, raise their hand. Uh, Mr. Dr. Pa Parak. Right. Oh. I don't know if they can speak. I think they can only type questions. I, no? No, I, 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 I see the hands, so I think it's really good uh, chance to listen to to them. Oh. 
Okay. Okay. So uh, maybe they will uh, leave the comment here, and uh, I would like to ask you uh, um, more detail. For example, how uh, particularly um, we you, you can see um, the initiative to promote uh, equitable development um, in your business. Um, for example, Alan, you said about providing um, clean water and some minimum amenity in rural area, right? Uh, Alan, can you share uh, very uh, brief, uh, very briefly about your um, your experience? Um, yeah, please. Please uh, turn on your microphone. Okay, we, we can't listen to you. And maybe when you are looking for your microphone here on the screen. No, we, 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 we can't listen to you. And can you, can you turn on your micro? Yeah, try again. No voice. Okay. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alan. We can't hear you. Again. Again. No, no. Now you turn it off. And please turn it on. Please turn it on. Perhaps, uh, Alan, perhaps you can exit and rejoin the session. Maybe that's that's the problem. Okay. okay. Um, Alan, uh, I'm sorry. Maybe you type your comment uh, uh, because I can't listen now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, maybe uh, Takeshi-san, uh, can you prepare for sharing your um, startup businesses you raise you, or you help in Cambodia? What is the... Uh, interesting startup idea um, you already helped uh, so we have 20 virtual company inside school so or inside school organized uh, uh, company so but our idea is from many area so mm -hmm. we will really increase this uh, is 30 or 40 uh, during this one year so this is half kind of education so we can easily start a, any kind of business. So uh, first kind, uh, first business uh, we can uh, spin out is a matching business of home uh, fixing support. So and second one is a human uh, HR agent. Third one is a drone uh, 3D uh, modeling company. The, uh, so uh, anyway, so our area is so very broad and for uh, um, one issue is that if uh, uh, we cannot do uh, the business uh, need uh, many money for example robot arm is a very expensive and automotive uh, the warehouse is very expensive this kind of company cannot start but uh, 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 if not, not not so much investment uh, we can start so uh, okay so uh, yeah, yeah, it is very interesting. Um, okay, um, I think that um, there are many, many initiatives uh, can be taken to promote mm -hmm. development. And um, my question is, uh, which role will be um, the most important? It is uh, private or public uh, sectors or government and what do you think? Uh, which uh, stakeholder have to take a role first and uh, the most important role? Uh, I don't have a voice, but we can we can't hear you. I'm sorry, Alan. Uh, how can we hear you now? Maybe you exist and re-enter the session. Your audio is off. Yeah, I think he's trying that. Yeah, and uh, Osama, um, who do you think, um, what, uh, which uh, stakeholder have to take a role? Well, I think, I mean, I'm a, 
Yeah, that's a that's a very difficult question. That's a that's a chicken and egg question, right? Because if you have the proper government uh, intervention and government investment, you can definitely accelerate the private sector. At the same time, without any private sector uh, kind of starting, it's hard for the governments to justify. I think it depends uh, uh, on on the economy. I think in the richer economies. Um, I think the bigger role will, will, by definition, be played by the private sector. And I think in the poorer economies, the public sector must play a, a role to push in certain directions to decide certain strategies and enable them uh, to, achieve, to achieve the growth. So it's a, it's a difficult one. Of course, in an ideal scenario, you want to have the public-private partnership. You want to have both of them pushing mm. in the same direction. Unfortunately, the region is... It has, a, it has a high variance between uh, mm. governments that are kind of interested in the proper kind of growth and uh, governments that are plagued with uh, a lot of uh, political problems and, and uh, you know, bad practices and kind of old practices. So, um, yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, I'm a huge believer in the private sector, but I'm also a big believer that without the proper encouragement from the public sector, it's very hard for the private sector to contribute. I have, yes, Ms. Lone, are you able to hear me? Yeah, 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 great, good. Right. Yeah. Can I just, okay, great. Yeah. Um, the last point I have made on the funding mechanism is very important because this has proven to work in mm -hmm. British Columbia, mm -hmm. whereby the government have allocated a revenue stream based on their long-term commercial activities to the First Nation. The First Nation is the this indigenous tribes of the British Columbia. And the Prime Minister have actually noticed the re result. Within two years, they have, they have actually find that such a program whereby the community is involved in a long-term revenue stream where funds are committed, that it allows for the social capital to flow down to the level where the community can partake in their project. So it supports a sustainable level of projects. So this is what I mean, because you have trillions of dollars invested in infrastructure throughout the world, globally, every year, and yet the level of poverty has increased. There is no benefits that have flown down to the community. So this whole approach has to be assessed. So the private sector alone you know, we even for us, when we do our projects, we are limited in terms of the cash flow with funds. We are limited in our efforts, but yet we start. But the, but the key thing is to look at this funding mechanism, and this has got to be initiated by the political will of the government. This oh. is point number one. At the bottom-up approach, the way to, to work towards achieving equitable development you can have a combination such as blended finance because now funds are fairly cheap. You don't have to go for a long-term public-private partnership approach whereby the government have to provide a grantee. And most government now, they don't want to take the risk for a long-term risk because what's going to happen? I mean, who knows? Because you see there's a third, second round of the, you know, this pandemic. So the blend, a blend, true blended finance, for example... What, what I am recommending, and this is something I work out myself, is mm. to look at budgets, even though there are stress under the today's environment. Yeah. All right? From this budget, you leverage it by private investment, by philanthropic funds, by yeah. private investors. And that will allow you to accelerate through blended finance to achieve the goal and to undertake community projects for equitable you know, development. So you have the top-down approach and you also have the bottom-up mm, approach. Yeah, I got your point. And uh, my uh, question is uh, nowadays, uh, how can we uh, rethink really about uh, um, equitable development uh, in the time of COVID? How, uh, what impact will a recovery from COVID have on equitable development? Uh, maybe everyone have the uh, your own observation. Um, who ready? Who is ready to share? Um, Alan? Right. 
in terms of COVID, like I've mentioned, if the four fundamentals are there, then you build up the resilience, financial resilience, you build up community resilience to be able to handle the COVID and at the same time start the process for the post-COVID this re, the, the recovery. What this crisis has shown is there are gaps in our system, not only in terms of food security, not only in terms of the health sector, but there's mm -hmm. also gaps within our capitalist system. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I saw a, I saw a caption that says, uh, you know, COVID is the virus. You know, this capitalism is the yeah. pandemic. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just being, you know, this facetious here. But so you, we need to have a rethink. A rethink is because, right, why are... Com no, because I ask a simple question. Has infrastructure... How does the community benefit from infrastructure projects? Yeah. So far, I have not seen any. Mm -hmm. Vietnam. And Vietnam is going through a major infrastructure thing. But is yeah. there any stake that is given to the community level? Let me quote further examples. Thailand is, is interesting because the yeah. government, when they do their renewable okay. project, like in solar... So only um, uh, 15 seconds left. So, yeah. I, so anyway, yeah, let's carry on. Uh, make a conclusion that it needs to ensure equitable access to healthcare, infrastructures, technology and education and skill development enable all people uh, to contribute and benefit from economic opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, our talk now is ending and thank you very much for your um, uh, participation. And I think that uh, discussion still continue online. Okay. And uh, we can still exchange through Horizon Asia um, meeting. Thank Good you. Day. Nice to thank meet you. you. Thank, you. Yeah. thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.